So once you've set up the hardware to heat and cool your hab, the next challenge you're likely to have with it will be the need to automate the heating and cooling to avoid it getting too hot or too cold simply because you're doing something else. I'm going to use the electronics printer to construct some components that we'll need for some early automation. We're going to need at least one memory chip because we need to record a target temperature on it. We're also going to need an I.O. device to write to both the wall cooler and the wall heater. We're also going to need another I.O. device because we're actually going to need to read what the temperature is from a sensor which we'll print in a moment. So three I.O. devices, one memory. So let's go ahead and print those sensors. We just need one sensor kit. And we're going to need two logic processors. One for the heater, one for the cooler. Now at this point, this is the minimum you need. I actually recommend, in an ideal world, after you've made your second logic processor, I actually recommend a second memory chip and the reason for that is you can have a single threshold and say if it's below this temperature turn on the heater and if it's above turn on the cooler and obviously the opposite um, opposite way around um, to, for turning them off but actually what you'll find will be that the heater and the cooler will both constantly flick on and off it's actually better to set a lower threshold above which you turn on the heater and a higher threshold sorry, a lower threshold below which you turn on the heater and a higher threshold above which you turn on the cooler and give yourself two or three degrees difference between the two. That will stop it flicking on and off constantly, which, to be honest with you, is just extremely annoying. So let's pick up all of these. I'm going to stack them first because we've obviously got multiple stacks um, and we will print that other memory. Now I've got far too much in my backpack, so... I'm just going to throw some things on the floor, um, various things that come as the starter kit, but we just need some more space to be able to stow some of these. And there's the other memory chip. Make sure you've got plenty of cable before you do this. Let's come inside. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fit another gas sensor. Now we can't use the airlock one because whilst at the moment the airlock one is going to be reporting the HAB temperature, if I depressurize the airlock it's not and that's going to lead to false readings. So we're going to put a dedicated gas sensor. We're going to put it into this cell here because we want it to be in the same frame as the heater and the cooler because that's where they're doing their work. I'm not going to connect it directly to there because I actually need some space to lay out the logic chips. We're going to do the logic chips across the floor. It's a bit messy, um, but when you're starting out, you often don't have a whole lot of space to lay them out. And logic chips are really bulky things, which is one of the reasons I tend to try to use the IC chips as early as I can. But they require alloys from the furnace, specifically steel and solder and electrum. So. Um, that will take a bit of time to get going. However, early game, you don't have the luxury of that. So let's show you how to do that. So first of all, we're going to lay down our two memory chips. Um, let's turn them around so that we're looking at them the same way. They can just go next to each other. Okay, we're going to lay down... Cabling this is a bit fun in the available space. Um, try not to go too close to the wall because I want the wiring to be a bit easier to see. Um, so uh, we're going to lay down one logic reader. So let's set this piece up first. And let's go around here first. I haven't made this any easier for myself because of the way I've laid this out. I probably haven't got enough cable. You can see we need quite a lot of cable because we need to connect all of the ports. Okay. So since I'm in creative, I'm not going to make you watch me make more cable. I'm just going to create some more cable. But obviously, make sure you have plenty of cable before you do this build. Okay. 
those I could have saved some by moving slightly closer, but I think I can leave them there for clarity. Let's restack that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do with these is we're going to set the logic reader to read from the gas sensor. Now you'll see there's only one gas sensor on the network and that's good news because it makes it easier to know it's this one. The reason that this one here is not showing up is it's the other side of the area power control. And area power control breaks the logic flow. So you can't pass logic between the two, which means I can't read anything inside the airlock from anything connected on this side, which includes all of this. That can be a benefit because it makes it easier to find the right thing, but it can also be a problem later on. The variable I want to read specifically on here is going to be, and you'll see it can read lots and lots of different things, so you can start to imagine the opportunities, um, but we want to read the temperature. And I'm going to turn that on, and you'll see that's immediately reading. Now, you may notice that, that is reading in Kelvin. Uh, if you're used to using the uh, Celsius system, it's nice and easy. Subtract 273, um, well, roughly, um, and you've got the right temperature, um, which means that if we want to aim at a room temperature here of, uh, say, no uh, lower than uh, 20 degrees and no higher than 25 degrees, um, the Kelvin equivalent is um, fairly easy to calculate because it's obviously 293 and 298. Um, I'm afraid if you're working on Fahrenheit, you'll have to do your own conversion because, honestly, I just don't really understand it. Actually, that's not true. I do understand it, but I can't in my head do a conversion. Right. Uh, OK, so what we're going to need to do now, we're going to need to put down the logic um, unit. So what we want is a logic compare, um, because what we want to do is be able to compare that temperature to the thresholds that we're going to set. So I'm going to put two logic compare units down because we're going to need one for each. Now at this point, this is going to start to get quite difficult to remember what's what. And I would recommend that you label these in order to get that done correctly. Now I've left the labeler on the lander, so I'm just going to go and grab that. you find the labeler in the red crate. So the labeler is super simple to use. Hold it in your hand, right click to turn it on, point at what you want and just click and then this will come up. So I'm going to call this logic memory and I'm, I'm going to keep the logic memory part because that makes it easier to know what type of device it is. I'm going to call this min temp and I'm going to call this one max temp, whoops, max temp, and then right click to turn it off because it makes an incredibly annoying noise. Um, right, so let's now get the screwdriver and we're going to set these memory chips. So if uh, we want those sorts of temperature, room temperature broadly, um, then what we want to do is say the minimum temperature that we're going to want in here is going to be 293. Now you'll see this plus here is increasing in multiples of 100. This will increase in multiples of 1. So you think, well, how am I going to do this? I don't want to have to click this any time. So the quick way is, of course, to go to 300 and just to come back down. So that's nice and easy. However, what you can also do, and this is going to be the maximum temperature, this is going to be 298. What you can also do with these is if you hold down the C button, you'll see now it's going in this instance in tens instead of hundreds and in this instance in 0.1 instead of 1. So I'm going to set that to the min and the maximum. Next let's cable these. You'll see that these also need cable across the bottom here. And that's because they need two inputs. Oops. This is where you can see you need quite a lot of cable to set this up. I don't want too many. Okay, so, whoops, missed that one. Okay, so 
what this is going to do, we're going to set, first of all, we better label these, right? Because otherwise we're going to get really confused later on. So we'll set this one since the, oh, since the heater's on this side and the cooler's on this side. We'll make this the heater and this the cooler. You can obviously organise that however you like. You can also spray these chips, by the way, with spray paint later on if you want to colour them to make it a bit easier. Make sure that these are off before you start cycling through um, because otherwise you'll cause all sorts of havoc on your system. Um, right, but what we want to do is we want to... So we're going to say if the temperature, which you'll remember is on this logic reader, and this is the heater. So we want to say is less and then we're going to go through and to say the minimum temperature. And if I turn that on We'll say that's zero. We're not currently less than the minimum temperature, and that is correct. The other one, we also want the logic reader. In this case, we're going to say greater than the, whoops, than the maximum temperature, and turn that on. And that one is a one. So zero and one. And what we're going to use those values for is to drive the on-off state of these two coolers, which is why we've got the last pair of these. So if I pop these in wherever I can find space to do it. So the first thing is Logic I.O. chips. Use the mouse wheel to get to Logic Writer. I'm going to place one there. And I think I can just about squeeze it in if I place one there. So you can see how much space it takes to lay these chips out. I could have made it very slightly more compact by sliding those up. But they do take a lot of space. I mean, there's other ways I could have made it more compact because I could have put one of these. In fact, I could still put one of these over there, which I will do. Because um, I could place it that way round. Um, so we can do that, but you can see it does take a lot of space and you just need to be conscious that some of these have got three ports, some of these have got four ports, and some have only got two. So um, obviously the actual cabling configuration um, may vary. But again, you know, we've used a lot of cable to do this as well. Health low. Hopefully I can just about do this before I run out of health. There we go. So that's two logic writers set up. That's brilliant. But again, we're going to start to quite quickly get confused what's doing what. So I'm going to label them and I'm going to call that one again the heater because it's on the heater side. And that one cooler because it's on the cooler side. Put that away. So let's get the screwdriver again. So let's go with the heater first of all. Again, make sure this is turned off. This is more and more important because this is actually going to write something out to the system and do something. So I want to take the compare heater, this chip here. That's my input. So that's going to read the zero or one from there. What do I want to do with it? Well, I want to send that to the wall heater. Now, when you cycle through, you'll see this is going in alphabetical order. There's a quick way you can also go the other way. Knowing wall heater starts with the W. If you hold down C, it'll go the other way. So that is now the wall heater. And then the variable I want is the on, because writing one to on turns it on, writing zero turns it off. And then once that's set, click that to turn on. That is now under automatic control. And then we just repeat the same. And you'll see I placed this wrong. I placed a logic reader. Um, it's quite a common mistake. It's very easy to do because it's on the same chip. So um, let me just... That's because I dug that one out and replaced it. Um, so again, this one, we're going to go logic compare cooler, that one, which is a one or zero. This is going to write out to the wall cooler, again to its on. So let's turn that on. And you'll see the wall cooler has turned on. And that wall cooler will run, not for very long, because it's going to run until temperatures below 25, which it is. And you'll see it's just on the cusp of that. So it is going to slightly irritatingly flick on and off as it bounces around just on the threshold there. You can build more complicated circuits that build in a difference between turning on and turning off. You'll need quite a lot more logic chips to do that, um, but it's quite a common practice once you move to using a single IC chip to control this whole lot. But this is a super simple um, way early game to just completely automate the climate control in your greenhouse. So two memory chips, 
three Logic I.O. chips, two um, Logic processors, and a whole lot of cable. So hopefully you found that helpful um, and you're able to now automate the climate control in your greenhouse.